11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Right. And the head of the woman is the man. So it's giving you a little bit of an order, right? You can think about it. So Christ, man, woman. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is God. So God, Christ, man, woman. Every man praying or prophesying. Every man reading this Bible. Every man learning this Bible. Every man teaching this Bible. Having his head covered. Dishonoreth his head. So you wearing that hat dishonoreth Christ right now. That's what you're doing. So you wearing that hat dishonoreth Christ right now. That's what you're doing. You telling me that the San Francisco 49ers is better than Christ. <laughs> God damn it. You can't make this shit up. So you wearing that hat dishonoreth Christ right now. He said if your head covered by praying and prophecy coming out to uncover your head. If you love Christ, if you love the Father, you will uncover your head. Right now you dishonor the Father with the spirit of the prophecy. Listen to this, read. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, do you think you're a spiritual man? Do you think you're spiritual? You don't think you're spiritual. You think you're a prophet. Huh? Do you think you're a priest? A priest? Okay, Yo, you think you're spiritual then, read. Let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you, Paul oh, said, the things that I write unto you, read, are the commandments of the Lord. He said that the commandments of the Lord. So go right back to the first Corinthians 11 and 3. Because right now you're showing the spirit of your days. Since you came up with everything I read, what I read from. The Bible just said, don't have your head covered in the midst of this Bible. We appreciate you staying here, but we're really hoping you snatch the hat off for a minute, bro. It's not going to kill you. Being on the bottom of society, you got your chance to start right now by uncovering your head. Let's go to the south. Give me Exodus 35. Bring it out. Right now, you got a chance to snatch your hat. That's it. This guy, I know you got a cold, but let me ask you something. Is keeping that hat on right now going to keep that cold right now? Yeah, I got to go. You got to be ready to go, right? But you got to hear this word, too, because I'm going to tell you something. You know who gave you that cold? The seed for your own. That's called judgment. Is keeping that hat on right now gonna keep that cold right now? Yeah, I got that good. You gotta be ready to go, right? But you gotta hear this word too, because I'm gonna tell you something. You know who gave you that cold? The seed for your own. That's called judgment. You ain't got no fringes on, do you? What? Fringes. You got no fringes? You know what that is? Alright, let me see to you. You ain't got no fringes on, do you? What? Fringes. You got no fringes, you know what that is? All right, number 16, 13. And do them, man. man. We have commandments that we must do. Come on. Hey. After our own minds. You know what our own mind to tell us right now? Man, I can't take this hat off, but I got a cold. I've been sneezing, my nose running out my left nostril. I can't take it. That's what our mind tells us. Hey. After our own minds. You know what our own mind to tell us right now? Man, I can't take this hat off, but I got a cold. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem. Yahweh Shah Bahashem Recha Ha Kudash. And double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren. All you fellow believers of the faith and supporters of the truth, including you sisters, and shalom to the elect. Anyway, uh, I want to touch on this video. It's kind of a double response. Um, one off of Elder Apostle Tahar's page, titled, um, it says, where the where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched, is not hell. I you I see because they teach the hell doctrine. Um, and there's some things that this the I U I C said, and Elder Pascal Ball did a response as well about forcing the law down, you know, these Jake's throats. So anyway, it seems as though the I U I C power hungry hat doctors, right, is trying to force force the law force the cause so to speak without trusting in Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah 
These guys, that's why they get on planes, okay, and they fly in other countries. Uh, West Africa, by the way. I don't know if they fly in East Africa or to Russia or everywhere else because that's where the Israelites are as well. So I don't know how that's going to work out. But <laughs> this is what they do. And um, these are the Matthew 23 Israelites. I, I used to do videos on these guys a while back. And when I was reading Matthew 23, I mean, it just sounds like the IUIC, okay? Let me read that real quick. And then we're going to jump into it a little bit more. It says, Then spake Yahweh shot to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they do, uh, they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not after their works, for they, uh, for they say and do not. Right? So these things, these particular Israelites, they're all about works, so to speak. And this is when you keep reading. Let me go on down and let me keep reading and it'll clear out, clear itself out. For they bind heavy burdens on and the grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their own fingers, right? So uh, going into the history of the IUIC, um, the debt, right the um criminal activity you know all the things that's happened and the bishops just they just break off and let people fall right the, um now they're out there telling people to take off their hats the guy has like a flu or cold and if he takes off his hat and gets sick and wind up in a hospital right which we know the lord would do but his uh, thing is to be uh not to be over righteous right but if he gets sick, they're not going to lift a finger to help this man if he gets even sicker. He puts on a hat to come up and and get and hear the word. Now, that at that point, you got to let Yahweh through the spirit of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, then manifest through this man in order for him to wake up. That's the problem with these guys. That's why Paul said Apollos has watered, but Yahweh gives the increase. These guys are trying to give the increase without the Lord. It says, it says, but all their works they do for it to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge their borders of their garments. This is why they got the extra purple, the extra gold, all of them in matching garments. They literally, when you do the commentary or when you really read into this, they literally made bigger phylacteries, right? They, they go around their wrists. I don't know why they don't have the phylacteries, right? And it was garments to the foot, right? And they made them bigger. They had bigger garments, you know? So what they did is they did extra to try to um, win the people. And it was really about to be seen. It was really about money. The more people they got, the more they can get the money, the tax write-offs. It's the same thing happening today. They're doing the same damn thing. That's why he said, um, um, you, you surpass sea and land to, um, make a proselyte, but you send them basically to hell. That's what these guys are doing. They're waking, they're so-called waking people up, but they're waking people up to destruction. And then they're putting fear on them and saying, if you don't, you're going to burn in hell forever. Your, your grandma or your grandpa and grandma, your, your children, they're all going to be burning in hell while you're in the kingdom forever. How is that? How is that even a blessing towards you? You have loved ones. How the heck is that a blessing? The Lord going to put that kind of burden on us in the kingdom of heaven? And this doesn't make no sense. I don't, again, this ain't nothing but a Christian church. You know? Um, you can read all of this and it, it breaks it all down. Um, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clear, like clean, the outside of the cup and the platter, but within are full of extortion and excess, leftovers. Right? Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Now, when you go to the word hypocrite, it actually means liars. They're fakers. This man standing up here 
convincingly uh, keep trying to convince this man to take off his hat instead of teaching the word. It's other people that want to hear. Now, when you go into the scriptures and it says, we'll get into that too. Um, it says right here, want to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, right? The, the above tomb, so to speak, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and all uncleanliness, right? So we're going to get the, now you can read all of this and it will show that. And then we're also going, going to get an example of what Yahweh did to those Pharisees and they had an issue with that as well. But we're going to read what he quoted, 1 Corinthians 11, um, what was it, 8? Not 8, is it 3? Four, every man that praying or prophesied, so that's the key, praying or prophesying. See how they threw it in there? That The, the men on the outside was not praying and prophesying. Where did he get that at? But you know what they said? They said as long as we're prophesying, the Bible is open. So that means everybody around them must have their hats off. So now if they don't have a beard, what are you going to tell them? Buy a stick on beard, right? Because they don't got a beard. What are you going to do then? If they don't have fringes, this man talking about fringes. I mean, when you apply these type of laws and all of us knew, if we all knew we was Israelites, we was all in ancient Israel, we knew we was Israelites, then you can even make that argument. But there's people who don't know. And that's why they wanted to hurt Paul, man. Anyway. Because you had those Pharisees, that's what they was all about. So it says praying or prophesying. But then when you um, when you go on down, the scripture says, does not even nature teach you that if a, have, a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. So it's kind of like they got that long hair and they got a head covering. That's why you can't have that long hair. Now, some of you might not say that, but according to um, not having confusion, if you're a man and woman and y'all like a block up the street and y'all both wearing a loose garment, how do you both be able to determine the two? That just brings confusion, man. And that's all it is. So let's get the example with John, John 9. It says, and Yahweh passed by and saw a man which was blind from his birth. And the disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that was born blind? This is going to reincarnation as well. Yahweh answered, neither was this man sinned nor his parents. So now you got to understand reincarnation. Because why would they even ask if this man born blind, who did sin? He was born blind. So this is something that he's speaking of, you know, pre-birth. But anyway, let's get to the point. Um, that the works should be manifest in him, right? And it says, um, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And this is what the Christian church is doing. They're spitting in their hands and rubbing people's faces. I don't know. Some weird stuff, uh, especially in the Christian church. Um, and he said unto him, go wash in the pool of uh, sick, uh, silk, siloam, siloam, which is the interpretation sent. He went uh, his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before him seeing him that he was blind said it is not this is is not this he that sat and begged some said and this we've seen the same situation at the pool of Bethesda when he did the same thing uh I'm gonna just get to the point therefore they say unto him how uh were thine eyes open he answered and said a man that is called Yahweh says Jesus made clay anointed mine eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of um, Siloam, or it means sent, and wash. Uh, and I went 
and washed, and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? So when you go on down, it says, They brought it, they brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was the Sabbath day when Yahabashah made the clay and opened his eyes. So as you can see where this is going, it was on the Sabbath day, and it was against the tradition of of the Jews to do any kind of work on the Sabbath day. See, the whole point we're going to make in this video is at the end of the day, our people have gotten away from what the laws was all about, right? And they got hung up on the money, right, on the popularity, and to be seen. And this is the same thing you see with this group. Nate is worth $150 million. The rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven, but they set him up. Okay? And then everybody just blindly follows. You can see it's a script. They're not doing any research on this. They got precept packages. Anyway, and it was the Sabbath day when Yahweh made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him, how is he, how is he received sight? He said unto them, he put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed and do see. Therefore, some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. That's what they said. Others said, how can be, uh, a man that is a sinner do such miracles? So now you had people, it was a, a confliction, contradiction, whatever you want to call it, going on. They said, this man worked miracles. How, how is he a sinner? He got this man to see. And there was a division among them. And this is where you had some of them say, this man is a devil. He's doing these miracles to trick you. This is what they're doing. And this is where they have the problem. And you see the same thing happen today with the Israelite groups. We're going to tell you like it is. And, and when we're telling you that, okay, we know the law is not to pray or prophesy, which are here covered. We know the laws when you go out and teach, you must have fringes. But we're telling people contrary that doesn't know uh, the law, right, who is still learning what's going on. Now we're going to go to Romans 3 and um, 19. This is the whole point Yahweh Shah came. Right? This is why the Christians say he came to fulfill the law. The law has been fulfilled. Well, first of all, the law is fulfilled in Hebrews 8. Why the Lord said he's going to write his laws in our heart. But this group, IUIC, see they teach that Roshacrucian doctrine. That we're in a new covenant, so basically the laws is fulfilled, so we got to follow it. But Hebrews 8 says, the whole house of Israel shall know me from the least to the greatest and not teach every man their neighbor. Again, it's not making sense. Hebrews 8 and, tw uh, I mean, Romans 3 and 20. Um, but now righteousness of God is without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God which is faith of Yahweh And that's why Yahweh did those miracles to bring us back through faith and not just the practicing of the law, right? Yahweh came to bridge us back through the law, through faith, because there's no way you can keep that law perfect. And they'll teach you that. They'll teach you you can keep it perfect. But on the Sabbath day, they won't cut off their hot water heater, right? If they have heat in the house, they won't cut it off. But then that's when they'll say they're covered by the blood of Jesus. Well, how make that make sense? You either you are or you're not. You're going to follow it or you're not. Anyway, uh, for all have sinned and come short of the glory, right? We can never make up what we've done, especially in the past lives. Being justified freely by, um, by his grace through the redemption in Yahweh Shah. I'm going to get to the point. Verse 27, where is boasting then with the question mark? And that's what the Pharisees did. You had men like the bishops at IUIC and those men, they are boasting in the law. It is excluded by the law, of, the law of works, nay, but by the law of faith. And this is what they don't push. They claim it's about faith, 
but they have no faith. This is why they're flying all over the world or certain particular countries where the Israelites at. Instead of trusting in the Lord through the Spirit, all you have to do is go to the highways and hedges and teach. So now if you're going to go that route, now you got to go into Russia, right? Now you got to go in various other indigenous parts of the planet. And now you got to go wake, try to wake them up. So you mean to tell me you only care about people in West Africa? What about East Africa? Now you need to go into the, to Sudan and you got to wake them up. Hey, are people amongst them too? No, nah, I won't do that. And in this group, you won't see anybody damn near look white in there. So now you got to go to Australia too. You got to go to various other places and wake the people up. That's why you know they're hypocrites and liars. Right? Let me go on down. It says, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yeah, we established the law. Yeah, we still established the law. But the bottom line in the video is that's why they had uh, hurt for Paul. Because Paul was doing things or saying things contrary through guile to, you know, to try to get them and hook them first. Just like the 12 tribes chart that people are against. To try to hook them. And then once they get it, can you imagine myself? I woke up to the truth. I woke up the, by seeing that white Im image of Jesus, right? And I said, I, that, that can't be true. So I did further research. And can you imagine me coming up to a group and I don't have no beard and I got a hat on my head and they're telling me you got to get a beard and you got to put a hat on your head. So if these guys are all about the law and you can keep it, then that means if you got to take the hat off, if they don't have a beard, you got to dismiss them with the beard too. You got to make it make sense. You either for it or you against it. But that's what these guys do. They putting burdens on people, right? And they don't, there's no need to do that. First they get it. And if they get it, the spirit of the Lord, remember the scripture says the kingdom of heaven starts within you. The Lord didn't need us to sacrifice, right? He really didn't need us to do that. There's a lot of things in the law that he didn't need us to do. Of course, the moral laws we got to do. But the sacrifices and the blood in the temples and all these things we were doing, he didn't need us to do that. And this is what Yahweh shot for. Yahweh shot was the sacrificial lamb. So there's things that is covered. If this man is the elect, he's covered by Yahweh shot. If he's the elect, and then he will get it because it's in him. It's not so much the hat, it's in him. According to the law, we prophesy without our heads covered that's because that's what the lord said to do representing you know being able to receive the message but at the end of the day it's all about the spirit and the lord didn't need us to do that but that's the tradition that we do because the lord set it up recognizing having our crown uncovered you know for receiving the message but the, the spirit is within you. And that's how you learn. That's how it opens up. Then once you learn, then you know to take the hat off while praying and prophesying, about the, by the way. That's all I have on that.